Here we're going to look at cell membranes. So this is an example of one, a lot of going on here. Uh, keeping in mind the cytoplasm is on the inside of the cell and the extracellular fluid is on the outside. This is the membrane that's dividing the two. And you can see there's a lot going on here uh, with our phospholipid bilayer and our protein channels. We're going to learn about a little bit and hopefully explain what some of these are. So starting with what we're focusing on, that membrane. Uh, it's the area located right here. You can see these large bluish purple kind of ovals represent proteins. So now we're just focused on this perimeter of the cell. We've gone over cell organelles, all these wonderful things on the inside. Now we're focusing just on the perimeter. So first, the overcoming the cell barrier. So the cell membrane is a barrier, but nutrients have to get into the cell because the cell needs those to be able to survive. And products and waste must get out of the cell. So while this is a barrier, it can't be completely solid. It has to be exchanging certain things. Permeability determines what moves in and out of the cell. And here we have our red blood cells with CO2 in this case coming in. Uh, and, and then it's trans being transported through. CO2 will then have to leave the cells. So this cell barrier, this membrane, is allowing certain things to come in, but also needs to allow things to go out of it. So the cell barrier, way to think about this, is it is not impermeable, which means it would let nothing in or out, it's like this rock wall. It's not freely permeable uh, if it lets anything pass through, like this revolving door, and it can come in and out. It's what we call selectively permeable. It restricts the movement, like the bouncer here at the nightclub or bar. So overcoming the cell barrier, cell membrane is selectively permeable. This is the key term here for cell barrier. It allows some materials to move freely and restricts other materials. So we could see here the larger molecules are kept on one side, the smaller molecules are let through. Same thing here, only certain molecules are let through, some are repelled. So restricted materials, selectively permeable restricts certain materials based on, could be their size, their electrical charge, their molecular shape, their lipid solubility, any one of these can restrict the materials to come in. Hydrophobic materials, are lipid soluble and can pass right through the membrane rapidly. Polar molecules do not cross the membrane very rapidly. Now polar, remember, are water. Lipids are kind of like those waxy coatings. And transport proteins are allow passage of hydrophilic substances across the membrane. So these transport proteins, these are those things we saw embedded in the membrane, they can allow certain things to come through. Membrane function, all cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane. Cell membranes are composed of a lipid bilayer with globular proteins embedded in that bilayer. So again, let's look at another example of this picture of this cell. Here we have our phospholipid bilayer here with our heads and tails. Remember, lipid-based tails, phospho-based or charge-based polar heads, creating this bilayer. In here we have our integral proteins. They could be channel proteins, uh, peripheral proteins just exist on the outside, Glycoproteins are proteins with a carbohydrate. Remember, glyco, think um, glucose. Uh, a glycolipid is a lipid with a carbohydrate attached. Certain things here, and these are important for recognition and also allowing things to pass through. So here's that same picture. Um, the function, again, the membrane, the external surface, carbohydrate groups join with lipids from, and form glycolipids, and with proteins that form glycoproteins. These function for cell identity markers. So this is an important aspect. We want to make sure we're identifying things that are occurring. It's kind of like you in school when you're wearing your IDs. This is a way for cells to identify what they're bumping into or what's, um, what's one cell differ than another cell. This membrane is not a completely rigid structure like we saw with the rock wall. So we call a fluid mosaic. So fluid, like water and the waves here, and mosaic, like all these little pieces coming together to form the mosaic of the eagle flying. So what this fluid mosaic is, is we have our hydrophobic, remember, fearing water, tails made out of lipids, and our phosphate, um, heads. This fluid mosaic, this 3D model kind of shows it rotating here. This shows a little bit better of an idea that it's kind of like moving. It's not a completely rigid structure. It's got this fluid mosaic-like model. It's able to move a little bit, and this mosaic-like appearance is what's causing the overall look. 
So looking specifically at the details, we have our hydrophilic head and our hydrophobic tails. Remember our saturated and unsaturated fatty acids from our macromolecules and our hydrophilic head, the phosphate and the glycerol here. Remember we're saturated. Everything is um, single bonds, including it's very, the tails are very straight. And if it's mixed with um, unsaturated, you'll notice a double bond forms and are unsaturated, causing this little kink, this little kick in the tail. The phospholipid bilayer, mainly two layers of phospholipids, the non-polar tails point inwards here, and the polar heads on the surface. Some of these contain cholesterol, especially in animal cells. It's fluid allowing proteins to move around within the bilayer. So those proteins that we saw are not fixed in one location. They can move and push out some of these and move their way through the phospholipid bilayer. And they can form the sheet or some of these um, kind of circular vesicle-like looking structures. <laughs> The cholesterol affect membrane fluidity within animal cells in their membranes. You can see here's cholesterol bound in there. So we want to keep our cholesterol low, but we want it, don't want it to be zero. We want to have some cholesterol in there because it's going to affect the permeability of our phospholipid bilayer in this case. And the cholesterol that we're getting measured in our blood is different than this. This is actually bound up. The cholesterol in our blood is moving through our vesicles and involving and coming in contact with red blood cells. This is embedded within all animal cells membranes. Membrane proteins. Uh, membranes are this kind of embedded portion here in the lipid bilayer. Peripheral proteins are proteins that are pendants that are loosely bound to the surface of the membrane. So these peripheral proteins are on the outside. Okay, they're not going all the way through. They could be important for recognition. doesn't mean they're not important. Integral proteins pass the entire way through, and channel proteins also pass the entire way through the phospholipid bilayer. Keep in mind, these peripheral proteins, as well as these integral and channel proteins, can work their way and move through the lipid bilayer. Just like you moving through a busy crowd, same thing with these proteins. Our integral proteins penetrate a hydrophobic core in the lipid bilayer, often transmembrane proteins, completely spanning the membrane, like our channel and integral proteins here. Here's some other renditions and showing that there is the external and internal conditions of the cell being spanned by these proteins. Solutions and transport. Remember, solution could be a homogeneous mixture um, composing of two or more components, the cell vent and the cell ute. The cell vent is the, is the dissolving medium, and the cell ute is the components in smaller quantities within the solution. So an example here of salt water solvents the dissolving medium that is the water our solute in this case would be the salt intercellular fluid neoplasm and cytosol remember that's what's inside the cell and extracellular fluid that's on the outside um, can be flat a plasma we're talking about blood cells um, remember intra is the inside and in this case interstitial fluid could be our um, exterior cell fluid is an example of that and it's exterior of the cells or tissues so something I want you to think about when I look at our cells and our recognition and some of the other videos might be helpful is our cell membranes like nightclubs. Are they allowing in certain things to come in and basically bouncing or rejecting other things from coming in? And how do they go about this? How does recognition and cell communication and IDs come into play here? So this cell membrane is important that it doesn't want to let anything just come in and out. It wants to help regulate that. So how are these integral proteins and the basic structure of the phospholipid, and pay attention to that word, phospho and lipid bilayer, coming into play? Good question to ask and relate it to cell membranes.